That's all. I, I hope you listen not only with your uh, ears, but with your heart, and uh, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart today. today. So bear with me. Okay. Before we start, uh, may I request everybody to please stand up. Let us open our Bibles in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 1 verse 17. This is our memory verse. That is Romans chapter 1 verse 17. Let us all read the verse. Are you there? Romans chapter 1 verse 17 it says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Let us pray, O Father in heaven, O Lord, we thank you for uh, this time that you have given us to be together, O Lord. We thank you for this opportunity of learning a word, our prayers that the Holy Spirit uh, guide us, open our hearts, our minds, so that we'll be able to learn something today, O Lord. Our prayer is that you touch the hearts of everyone so that we will increase our faith, O Lord, to glorify you and please you, O Lord. We thank you. We uh, ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again, good morning. Uh, as our memory verse for this week, it's Romans chapter 1, verse 17. It says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Faith actually is essential to our uh, is essential to our lives as believers it is the very foundation of our christian belief do you believe that it is the very foundation of our christian belief we begin our journey with our profession of uh, our belief and faith in who god is we believe by faith that jesus lived died on the cross and rose again on the third day according to the scripture. We must have faith to be saved. This was the lesson taught by Brother Samuel last week. We must have faith to be saved. This week we will continue our lesson on faith. We have actually selected several examples from the Hall of Faith taken from the book of Hebrews chapter 11. If I may ask everybody to open your uh, Bibles in Hebrews chapter 11. In verse 13 it says, verse 13, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on this earth. We can see that it mentioned, These all died in faith. These all died in faith. Some of the people listed in this document, documentary of faith made horrible blunders during their lives. Same is true with us. We will make a lot of mistakes. There's no one who is perfect. Everybody will make mistakes. But the good news is that these people listed they died with their faith. They died with their faith. Same is true with us. We can die with our faith. We can die with our faith. They got back up after they fell. This is good news because all of us make mistakes. But we can still live by faith. This is the good news. We can all live by faith. Uh, don't worry because, you know, mistakes happen. We will all make, make mistakes. But God will give us the opportunity to correct these mistakes if only we live by faith. But what is faith? What is faith? It is in our handouts. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, there's a definition of faith here. It says here, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So it is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, write down the missing word there. It is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Okay, as mentioned earlier, we will take some examples from the Bible. Let us take the first example, the, the 
parents of Moses. Do you remember the story of Moses? Amen. That he, when he was born, what was the problem? What was the problem during his birth? All the firstborn. Actually, the, the Pharaoh gave instruction to kill all male. So what did the parents do? Because the mother conceived Moses, and then he uh, and and then uh, he was born. And when he was born, the mother saw him as a goodly man or a goodly baby. So what he did to save the life of Moses, he hid Moses from everyone for three months. By faith, he hid Moses for three months. However, after three months, he cannot hid, sorry, he cannot hide Moses anymore. What he did was, or what they did was, to get a bulrush, to make a boat, put Moses on it, and then they set him free in the river. They did this by faith. They did this by faith, trusting that God will protect Moses. Amen. Amen? They did it by faith. Imagine the faith to take your three-month-old child and float him down the river in a little homemade boat. Can you imagine that? That's quite difficult to do. Who are mothers here? Very few. You know, if you bore a child, you just don't want insects to bite your children. Amen? Amen. It's very difficult to let go of children. But by faith, they set Moses, you know, to save him, trusting that God will do what he needs to do to save Moses. This came after hiding the child for three months from a government which was determined to kill all the male babies because the Pharaoh was fearful of the rapid growing population of the Israelites. Moses' parents had a courageous faith in God. Their faith is courageous. They hid him for three months and took an ark of bulrushes for him and laid it in the river. And God honored the faith of the courageous parents. Allowing Pharaoh's daughter to discover Moses and respond in mercy. So in short, Moses was spared. Because the Pharaoh's daughter got him and raised him. And <clears throat> Moses' parents courageously risked their lives in order to do what which, what which would please God. Their action was based on their faith in God. This is what is uh, required from us. You know, we should act through our faith. Trusting God. That God will do His part if only we give Him our full trust. The second example is Moses. Moses, we can see his account in Exodus, Exodus chapter two verse eleven, and he is mentioned in the hall of uh, faith in Hebrews chapter eleven, verse twenty four and twenty five. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh. Amen. Amen. Imagine you're growing up. Was it, uh, is it a very good thing to be recognized to be a royalty? Yes. yes. If yes. you were born as a son of the king, would, would that uh, be a reason for you to be proud? It will be, right? Yes. It will be. However, in the case of Moses, he refused to be called the son of the Pharaoh's daughter. Choosing rather to be evil and treated with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. He chose to be affiliated with the family of God rather than to be called the son of the daughter of the Pharaoh. Moses decided to take his chance with his brethren and by faith forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king as he in God who is invincible. Invisible. It takes faith to choose God's way. Amen. It takes faith to choose God's way over the easy way. We always tend to do the easy way. This is human nature. Right. However, in the case of Moses, he took the hard way. He chose the hard way because this is the right thing to do. Because this is what God expects him to do. He acted by faith. And we know the, the, the result of that faith. 
Third one is the children of Israel. In Exodus chapter 14, verse 22, you can see the account of the Israelites when they were taken out of Egypt. And they were trapped because there's mountain on the other side and then there's the Red Sea. It was time for the children of Israel to escape from Pharaoh. And yet they were trapped. What God did was to part the Red Sea so that they can cross. Can you imagine the sea parted? You have water on your both sides. Won't you have fear? Matatakot po ba kayo? Yes. Matatakot po kayo? Impossible na hindi kayo matakot, right? Right. Just the mere fact that God performed that miracle is already frightening. Imagine the Red Sea being parted. How can you fathom that? Me, up to now, I cannot fathom that. And all the more you will cross the Red Sea with the high water, a uh, wall of water on your sides. Can you imagine that? Very difficult to imagine, actually. <clears throat> By faith, the Israelites passed through the Red Sea. Amen? Amen. They passed through the Red Sea. Through their faith. Trusting that God will deliver them. Deliver them from the Egyptians. It seems impossible for the Israelites to survive. However, we can see that man's extremity is God's opportunity. Amen. It is an opportunity for God to show His power that He is able to deliver the Jews or the Israelites from the hands of the Egyptians. Amen. There will be fear. And yet, you know, the Israelites trusted God. They crossed the Red Sea, trusting God that God will deliver them. Amen. Israelites experience victorious faith. Why? Because faith is greater than any fear. Amen. Faith is greater than any fear. Amen. Faith, I, sorry, we will always have fear. It's normal to have fear. However, always remember that our faith, is, faith in God is greater than any fear that we have in our hearts. In Exodus chapter 14, verse 13, it says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see, ye shall see them again no more forever. A victorious faith, stand still, and trust God to work. A victorious fear, Stand still and trust God to work. This is what Moses told the Israelites. And they just trusted God, crossed the Red Sea, and made it to the other side. Third example is Abraham. We can see his account in um, Genesis chapter 22. And uh, he was mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 17. Abraham was elected to the Hall of Fame twice. Twice. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, actually Abram, Get out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. By faith, Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. The Lord commanded him to leave, and Abraham just leave, just left. Left his comfort zone. What he did was just to trust God. Trusting that God knows what He's doing. Amen. It's, a bit, it's a very difficult thing to do. If God has told you to do something and you have doubts, probably you won't do it. But Abraham just did what the Lord told him to do. The, the Lord asked him to leave. And he, leave, and he left immediately. Without doubts. Trusting. And believing that God would guide him, that guide, uh, that God will will lead him to where He wants him to be, with him and with his family. There was no questioning, and there was no wavering. This is what God expects from us. If God wants us to do something, we should we should just put our full trust in God, without questions, without wavering. 
because God has already set examples in the Bible as in uh, as we have uh, studied the uh, the life of Abraham. Second thing, Abraham was told to offer his son Isaac as a burnt sacrifice for the Lord. Imagine your only son and God has asked ask him to offer Isaac as a burnt sacrifice. Abraham did not believe God was being mean. Abraham thought that God was testing him. That he believed that God was able to raise Isaac from the dead. Even God had not spared in uh, Isaac's life. He told this man that he and Isaac were going up to the mountain, but they would come back again. We can see this in Genesis chapter 22, verse 5. He didn't doubt that God, even if he killed Isaac, that God is able to raise him from the dead. <clears throat> As I mentioned earlier, Abraham was elected to the Hall of Fame twice. His life can be wrapped in three words, actually. Three words. Three words to wrap up Abraham's life. Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God. The question is, do we believe God? Amen. Do we believe God? Amen. Do we trust God fully? Amen. Are we willing to do what God wants us to do? Even if it's difficult? Even if it's difficult, that's a big question to all of us. Points to ponder. Number one, faith is acting in spite of doubt. Faith is acting in spite of doubt. Faith is not necessarily acting without doubt. Because doubt will always be there. However, faith is acting in spite of doubt. Remember the story of Noah? Before Noah, did they experience rain? No. They have not experienced rain. However, the Lord asked him to build an ark. A big ark. Not just an ark. A very big ark. Would you doubt if, you, if God asked you to build an ark? What for? Can you imagine that? You know, God asking you to build a big ark. And he has not experienced rain. And it was up in the mountain. It's not even near the shore. God. Imagine that. But what did Noah do? He just built the ark and followed the instruction of the Lord. Amen. He acted by his faith. Amen. Trusting God Amen. that there's a purpose why God has asked him to build the big ark. Noah may have some doubts, but he built the ark anyway. Also, the example of this is the three Hebrew children. Remember them? Nebuchadnezzar asked them to, to bow down the image. <laughs> Ananiah, no? Shedrach? Mesak and Abednego, sorry. <laughs> okay, let's continue. The three Hebrew children told Nebuchadnezzar that their God will save them, but they added the words in Daniel chapter 3, verse 18. But if not, but if not, they did not know what God would exactly do, but they acted in spite of their doubts. They acted in spite of their doubts. The Lord expects us to just trust Him. Trust Him fully. Just like the, the three Hebrew children did. Just like us know what did. Even if you don't know what the reason why God is, do, is asking you to do something. Just trust Him and do what God wants you to do. And let God and trust God to do His part. Faith is acting in spite of doubt. And faith in Christ is never in vain. Faith in Christ is never in vain. If Jesus is not risen from the dead, our faith is in vain. But praise God, He did. He rose from the dead. 
He is now sitting at the right hand of the Father. Verse 13 to 14. 1 Corinthians, verse, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 13 to 14. It says, But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also in vain. Jesus has power over death. Amen? Amen. Jesus has power over death. If He was able to conquer death, then He is able to, to, to conquer anything. Amen? Amen? Do you have a problem today? Amen. Do you come here with a problem? Amen. Do you believe that God can conquer that problem? Amen. That Jesus is able to do and solve your problem? Amen? Amen? Because, you know, faith in Christ will never be in vain. This is why Paul said, that I know, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection as mentioned in, Philipp in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. All we need to do is trust God, trust Jesus, because our faith in Jesus will never be in vain. If He is able to conquer death, He is able to conquer anything. No big problem is, is difficult in the hands of God. Amen? If you are here with a problem, just trust God. Amen. Because God can surely solve your problem if you only trust Him and let Him work in your life. So faith in Christ is never in vain. Amen. Faith in number three, faith in our sorry, faith is our shield against the enemy. The shield of faith will protect against the fiery darts of the wicked. In Ephesians chapter six, verse sixteen, we need to constantly live by faith by faith because it is what enables us to overcome the devil. We are admonished to walk by faith and not by sight. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. I will read Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16 again. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. When the enemy attacks, we believers are to trust in God. And, of course, He sure promises to block and quench the flaming arrows that is coming from our enemy. All we need to do is have faith in God because our faith will shield us from the fiery darts of the enemy. Conclusion. This is a very short lesson. Faith is important because... Why is it important? Because it affects our decisions. It will affect our the decisions that we will make. The way we interact with others. The way we react to situations. You know, faith will determine our action. Faith will determine the way we interact with other people. And also, faith will determine our reaction to problems that confront us. Do you agree? Amen. It will determine our action on the problems we are facing in life. The lesson is teaching us that we should practice our faith. Amen? Amen. We should practice our faith. Because the more we put our trust in the Lord, the more faith we develop. Amen. 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 We develop our faith by trusting God. If we, if we put more faith on God, then we develop more faith in Him. Our testimony and witness is based on our faith. Do you agree? We win others to Christ not only by the words we speak, but by our actions. You know, sometimes, you know, the, the words that you say are very convincing. But your actions are more convincing than your words. Amen. True faith is profitable. It says in the lesson, true faith is profitable. We are able to share the good news of faith about how God worked in our lives, how God changed our situations, and how God helped us through tough times. The words of testimony not only build up the person speaking, it only does not build us, 
but it also gives courage to the hearer. You know, our testimony gives courage to the hearer so that they are also encouraged and also they are encouraged to believe on God. Why is it faith is important? Because faith will determine our action. Faith will determine our action to situations and problems. And because of this, because of our testimony, others would be encouraged also. Others would ask, why is it that he is different? Why is it that in spite of, despite of problems, his demeanor is different? What is it in him? What is different with him? And they, and they, will, they will realize that it is only because they have Christ in their hearts. Our testimony is, is important. And we develop this testimony because of our faith in God. Why is faith important? Because it is important for our testimony. Faith without works is dead. Mentioned in James chapter 2, uh, verses 14 to 26. This does not mean that works are related to salvation. Pastor John is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is always mentioning this. That our good works has nothing to do with our salvation. However, we need to do good works because we are saved. Amen? Amen. We don't do good works because we want to be saved. We do good works because we are saved. Amen. Amen. We are justified already in the eyes of God because of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. However, we need justification in the sight of men. How can, how can we get this justification? Through our good works. This is the reason why we need to do good works so that others will see Christ in us. Through our good works, they are encouraged to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their own personal Savior. Amen. The emphasis in this passage is that man being justified in the sight of man by our good works. God wants our lives to bring profit. Amen. God, who among here has been saved? Who accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Amen. Savior? Raise your hand. Okay? You have already profited from the gospel. We have already profited from the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. So now what we, what we are going what are we going to do with that gift that we receive? We should share it. Amen? Amen. We should share it. We are being justified in the sight of man through our good works. Because through our good works, people will recognize the need for the Lord Jesus Christ as their own personal Savior. God wants our lives to be to, to bring profit or returns after we have be, we have been saved. Faith in Christ is enough to get us saved, but faith without works can no can go no further than one's own salvation. We need to act. We need to use our faith to have a good testimony, so that this good testimony would would result to good results for our lives to be profitable. For, for our lives to yield results, bring souls to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. I hope you learned something today. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Jim. Okay, for the sake of uh, those who just uh, came in, uh, let's take a little review. Take your notes, please. So, pupunta tayo dun sa ating memory verse. Uh, what do you learn dito sa ating memory verse? Kunting, make we, we have time, okay? So, make sure, uh, ability to share your thoughts. In Romans chapter 1, verse 17, the Bible says, for, the, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Pag sinabi nito na the just shall live by faith, ang ibig sabihin nito yung mga, uh, ang mga, brother Jude, saved people, okay? Those who are saved. Uh, the just shall live by faith. We should walk by faith and not by sight. Okay? Now, in the definition uh, from Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, can you please read it? Hebrews 11 1. Hebrews chapter 11 verse number 1. Will somebody please read the verse? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Now faith is the substance of 
What are the first three words in that verse? Ano yung unang tatlong words dun sa Hebrews 11.1? Now faith is. Now faith is. Magandang definition ng faith yan. I-invert nyo lang yung, i-scramble nyo lang yung tatlong words na yun. Now, now faith is, or pwede faith is now. Uh, iba ang faith, iba ang hope. Okay? Pag sinabi mong hope, that means in the future. So, when you pray, alimbawa, uh, you want something from the Lord. You are, uh, you, have, uh, you have a petition. You are praying for something. Is it right to say that you believe that God will answer your prayers? Uh, when you are praying, do you believe that uh, when you pray, do you believe that God will answer your prayers? Amen. Okay. Uh, we need to learn from that. Let's turn to Mark, Mark chapter 9. Uh, okay. We will come to this now. Now, when, when we pray, the Bible says, is that chapter 11? Chapter 11. Tignan natin dito. Chapter 11, verse number 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, follow me, follow me very carefully, when you pray, believe that ye, say that, believe that ye, receive them, and ye shall, have them. So kapag nagpre-pray ka, natanggap mo na ba yung yung hinihingi mo sa Panginoon? Hindi pa. Pero ang sabi nito, when you pray, believe that ye receive them. That's faith. Believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. So when you pray, you should believe that God has already answered your prayers because faith is now. now. Kapag ginawa mong future yan, that is no longer faith. That's already hope. You are hoping for an answer. Okay? So the Bible says, whatsoever ye, again, let, us, let me read the verse here. Therefore I say unto you, this is the Lord Jesus Christ is speaking, whatsoever things Sorry, what things soever you desire, when ye pray, under any word believe. Okay, that means faith. Have faith. Believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. So now faith is, or faith is now. See, when you are hoping for an answer, that is not faith. So ang sinasabi ng Panginoon dito, when you pray, kapag Meron kang ipinalangin sa Panginoon, meron kang hinihingi sa Panginoon. Believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. That's why when you understand that verse, Mark 11, 24, now you understand the definition of faith. Faith is the, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Pag sinabi mong substance, it is something that you can, na pwede mong tangible things, pwede mong mahawakan. Okay? Nandiyan na. Uh, faith is the substance of things. What? Hope for. Wala pa sa'yo, pero pinanghahawakan mo na. Ano yung pinanghahawakan mo? Faith. It is good as uh, having what you ask God for. Faith is the substance of things hope for, the evidence of things that sin. Probably the best way to explain this is, uh, let's say I need money. And I go to Brother Conrad and I said, Brother Conrad, can you please, can, I some, can you lend me some money? Can you give me some money? How much do you need? I need 5,000 reals. Oh, I don't have 5,000 reals. But he makes me a check. Okay? He gives me the check. Do I have the money already? No. No. But I have the check. Okay? So it is the substance. May pinanghahawa ka na ako. May pera na ako. May check ako eh. Okay? So when you pray for something, now... Uh, faith is now. 
Okay, now faith is when you pray the Lord Jesus Christ and when you pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. That's probably the reason why the Lord is not answering our prayers because we are not believing in an answer. We are hoping for an answer. So the Bible says, now faith is the substance of things so for the evidence of things not seen. And uh, we heard great examples here of people in the Bible who had faith. Okay, we have, uh, uh, in our example, we have four. But uh, as we go into the into the uh, points, we also learn of other Bible examples like Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, or otherwise known as Sadak, Meshach, and Abednego. So, uh, what is number one? Faith is, what is the blank here? Faith is acting in spite of doubt. That did Jimmy mention uh, several things that really, no, isa sa mga sinabi yun is, uh, faith is greater than any, what? Let me see if you're listening to what he was saying. He said, faith is greater than any fear. Fear. He repeated that line. Okay. Faith is greater than any fear. So, number one, faith is opting in spite of doubt. Turn to Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. I think we can relate with this. Makaka-relate tayo dito. May isang ama rito na mayroon isang problema sa kanyang anak. Uh, parang siguro epileptic to. Uh, now, let me let me just uh, go back to verse number 20. And they brought him unto him. They brought the uh, he brought his uh, son. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed for me. And he, this is the Lord Jesus Christ, asked his father. Tinanong niya yung ama ng bata. How long is this ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. Sabi niya, Panginoon, mula pa nung maliit pa yan, ganyan na talaga ang problema ng anak ko. Now, verse number 22. And all times, it had, it had tossed him into the fire and into the waters. You know, kung meron mang epilepsy, delikado yan. Pag inataki ka na nasa tubig, ikamamatay mo talaga yan. So, this dad was so concerned about uh, the welfare of his son. And you would be if you are the father. Okay? Now, turn to uh, verse 22. To destroy him. And the father said these words, But if thou canst do anything, Panginoon, kung meron kang pwedeng magawa, Panginoon, kung meron kang pwedeng gawin, have compassion on us and help us. Panginoon, kaawaan nyo kami, tulungan nyo kami. You know, when you have burdens, when you have problems, it's always good to come to the Lord because the Lord Jesus Christ can do anything. Amen. He can solve any problem that you have. Right. Okay. Not that you should come to the Lord only when you have problems. Sometimes there's another problem. We only come to the Lord. We only remember Him when we have problems. Have you seen a Have you seen a, a vehicle? A vehicle has how many tires? Four. Really? Ilang gunong meron yung sasakyan mo, Brother John? Lima. You have four tires that you that you use, and then you have a spare tire. But is it true that oftentimes we don't remember the spare tire until we get flat tire? Di ba? Meron yung spare tire, it's under your car. But you don't think about that spare tire. You only think of the spare tire when you have a flat tire. The moment you have a flat tire, oh, the spare tire. Sometimes that's the way we treat God. We only remember God when we have a flat tire. Okay? But uh, we should always come to the Lord whether you have problems or no problems. Right. But this man, he had, a, he had a problem. He came to the Lord. He said, Lord, have compassion on us and help us. Listen to this. Verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe all things, kung meron kang pananampalataya, if thou canst believe all things, if thou, uh, sorry, if thou canst believe all things, 
are possible to him that do you believe this okay you are honest you're not answering just a few okay at least that's good you're being honest okay but whether you believe this or not this is true the lord jesus christ if you believe if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believe it and look at what the father did i did say what the father said in verse number 24 and straightway the father of a child cried out and said with tears lord what did he say i believe but he added something help thou mine and believe he is saying i believe but in his heart in you he has what and believe are you like that are you like that when you pray you say you believe but deep in your heart you have some doubts hello amen now this daddy said lord i believe help down my unbelief and jesus saw that the people came running together he rebuked the foul spirit saying to him thou dumb and deaf spirit i charge thee come out of him and enter no more into him and the problem was solved and this should be our prayer this should be our prayer we should not be ashamed to admit before god that we have unbeliefs okay and uh, uh, let's let's uh, let's take care of this word. God said it. Let's believe it. Amen. Amen. God said it. Let's believe it. So faith is acting in spite of doubt. And then number two, faith in Christ is what's the blank? It starts with letter N. Is Naomi never in vain? Okay. Faith in Christ is never in vain. You will never be ashamed. That means you will never be disappointed. When you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you will never be disappointed. Amen. You can trust the Lord Jesus Christ with anything. Amen? Amen. Including your finances. The problem of many Christians is that we trust Him with our soul, but we do not trust Him with our finances. Right. Okay? Uh, but uh, our faith in Christ is never in vain. Number three, Faith is our, it is our shield against the enemy. Who is our enemy? Satan. Satan is our enemy. Let's read Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 16. Ephesians 6, 16. Uh, let's read this uh, verse. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 16. It would be good for you to read, starting with verse number 10. Uh, this is talking about the whole armor. Put your whole, whole armor. Yeah. Finally, my brethren, bestow in the Lord and in the power of His might, put on the whole armor of God, that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the, of the darkness of this world, against his spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God. It's mentioned again, whole armor. Okay. If you are a soldier and you go to war, you want to be fully equipped. Right. Okay. You have helmet, you have everything that you need. The same is true with the Christian. The Bible says here that you may be able. Without this armor, we cannot uh, we cannot defeat the enemy. Uh, you may be able to stand in the evil day and having them all to stand. Is standard for having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet charged with the preparation of the gospel of peace and above all taking the shield of faith where we you shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God so faith is our shield against the enemy and at the bottom part of your notes true faith is True faith is what? Profitable. profitable. Okay? True faith is profitable. I hope you learned something from the lesson today. Amen? This is only lesson number two of 12 lessons on faith. And I hope that you will take this note and uh, review it, meditate upon it, and let the word of God uh, sink deep in your, in your hearts and uh, that we will learn to live by faith and not by sight. Let's pray and then... Uh, Brother Ronald, is somebody playing the instrument of this? Uh,
Faith, can you play? Okay. Maybe you want, can you play your, the music piece you played last time? Do you have it? Okay. Take your piece. With you. We want to hear the uh, music piece. Faith is really improving with her piano. Let's pray. Love you, Heavenly Father. We praise you. We thank you for uh, Brother Jimmy and for his life and uh, for his faithfulness. But most of all, Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness to us. We thank you, Lord, for giving us your precious word that taught us today about uh, what faith is. Lord, I pray that you will bless our morning service, that everything we do today will bring glory and honor to your holy name. Continue to bless our visitors and members who are still on their way. Keep them safe. We all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, faith will play the piano, and after this we will start our service. Thank you. 